Hello and welcome back to the Sports Sermon. I'm Dylan Staggy. I'm Jason Gandhi. I'm John Majors. I'm Dan Majors. And we are back today for the start of our fantasy football podcast. As you could tell today, the title from the title of the video, we are talking about the quarterbacks. We're going to go through some quarterback rankings, answer some questions that we had written up. Uh, Cam Newton, Jameis Winston, Matt Ryan, you'll hear all about those guys. So, let's start it off with our first question today. Can Cam Newton bounce back from his rough season last year and return to 2015 form? Jason wants to go first. What do you have? Uh, I think he can. I love Christian McCaffrey and Curtis Samuel for Cam Newton. It helps him have a dynamic running back that teams will have to respect out of the backfield, ideally opening up seams for Greg Olson or the ability to go over the top of Calvin Benjamin. He is a bargain at the QB spot. QBs are always smart to wait on when it comes to fantasy, and his scoring ability with his running and passing options make him very valuable in fantasy. The only worry I have is he's coming off rotator cuff surgery, and I'm not, I'm not sure if he's patient enough to truly let that heal. Uh, I think he can, too. I don't think he can be as good as he was his MVP season. and But his concussion also limited, limited him last year. Also has an easier schedule and not as much pressure on him. An interesting debate I heard. I don't know what you guys think about it. They said, do you think Cam Newton's already peaked? Or what? Has he already oh, peaked? Oh. What do you guys um, think? He is uh, 28 years old. And he's already peaked? I mean, that'll be his, his MVP season will be his best season, yeah. but he still has a lot of years left in his prime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. So you think he's in the middle of his prime? He hasn't peaked yet? No, he hasn't peaked. No. Right. I was on first take. I heard it. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. All right. I think he'll bounce back. He has an on year, then an off year, then an on year. It's time for his on year. They had an off year last year, but his schedule is much better, and he has teams on there. He can increase his stats, and that's crucial for fantasy football. So I believe he will have a good season. Yeah, I do like Cam Newton this year. Not all the way back to his 2015 MVP form, but has a couple new weapons in Christian McCaffrey and Curtis Samuel. Like Dan said, he had a concussion last year. I think he will bounce back and be closer to 2015 than 2016 this year. Let's move into our next question, though. Is Jameis Winston a top five fantasy quarterback this year? Jason, no, what do you think? not yet. I can't put him ahead of those guys yet, but I do love Jameis this year. O.J. Howard and Deshaun Jackson helped pair together an amazing offense with Mike Evans. Winston improved drastically last year, and I expect him to take another step with a better offense. He sees a limited turnovers. I think he's 10 right now, but I think in the next few years he can move up to in the top five. Yeah, I'm right there with Jason. He's not there just yet, uh, but he is. I have him as a Tier 2 quarterback. I agree with you guys. Give him a few more years. He also needs to cut down on the interceptions. Yeah. That's costly and for him. Yeah, and fumbles. He had that problem in college, too, but I think he'll cut it down, though, for about 28 touchdowns like he did last year. Yeah, I don't think he's even close to being a top-five quarterback, at least this year. But in a few years, once some guys like Breeze and Brady uh, retire, he'll definitely be able to move up to uh, a top-five quarterback. I love Jameis this year, but you cannot say he's better than Rodgers, Brady, Breeze, Luck, Mariota, Ryan, Wilson. I I can't say J- Jameis is a top-five but not close. Not mean, this year, no. You don't no. think he's top 10? I'd put him right at the end of my top 10. But That's close to me. I mean, four off isn't... Yeah. I mean, I have him in a lower like in you, the second tier than... He's waiting for some of these other guys to retire. He's still got some time. Who's going to retire soon besides Brady? And he says he got five years left. Brady, Breeze... Roethlisberger said... Or he was Rod- 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 but don't yeah, even too. mention Roethlisberger. I mean, I put him in there too as the <laughs> old quarterbacks I mean I mean do you have do you think Big Ben's better than Winston right now oh yeah yes fantasy no. quarterback or, or that's what I'm saying fantasy I don't care about real I'm saying fantasy yeah, yes yeah. sure consider yeah. the weapons around him too oh. yeah I'm down. Yeah, I, I, think it's, I think there's debate there. no. I, think yeah. definitely, I think there's debate there but different quarterback do you think Matt Ryan will repeat his MVP season I don't. I think he'll regress purely because his numbers were slightly inflated last year. I think he'll be solid again, but not what the cost is. As the fourth-ranked QB, his average draft position is way too high. When there are guys like Big Ben, Cam Newton, Jameis, Mariota, Derek Carr, who will just do a tad worse but will allow your roster to be more balanced, I wouldn't jump on Ryan, let the guy that has heard his name before draft him in your league, 
and stick to those guys that we've talked about later and don't pull the trigger on Ryan because he was the MVP. He's going to degress, uh, regress with Steve Sarkeesian as the OC. Uh, I do not think he is either. I look at one stat, really. Peyton Manning uh, is the only one since 96 to repeat. And Matt Ryan, he's just not on his own. Yeah, he won't be close to repeating, I don't think. I think Matt Ryan will repeat his performance, but he will not win the MVP, in my opinion. He'll put up big numbers. He'll put up big numbers. And Julio Jones is still in his prime. As big as he did this year. A you little less. He regresses at all. A little less. Not the same. He threw for almost 5,000 yards. That's what I'm saying. He's not going to do that again. He has a little bit of a tougher schedule, but I think he could... The Bucks yeah, twice, the Saints twice, and the Panthers twice. Those teams are all defense. yeah. <laughs> Saints and Bucks defenses aren't Panthers anything had great. Off defense Pan- up last year. Yeah. I'm just saying in general, those teams aren't bad, which means he's going to have to be able to be productive for the whole game because they're going to be able to score all four of the offenses in that division. Are if they're phenomenal. losing games, that means he throws more. So yeah, competitive more game. picks. More touchdowns. No. <laughs> he seven interceptions last year. I'm just saying. I think he regresses. I don't like Sharks. I don't like Sarkeesian's <laughs> offense. No. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's not the problem. But yeah, still, I, I mean, if they had Shanahan, I agree. He's still a very solid one. Yes, but he's not worth drafting as your fourth QB when there are guys like Big Ben, Cam Newton, Derek Carr. When you can get another running back or receiver to help boost your roster. The no. Falcons' offense is lethal. I but that's see him fine. But you, I would rather take my second wide receiver or my second okay, running back. This isn't a debate over whether you like taking quarterbacks early. This is a debate over what? will Matt what Ryan. Be? No, I know. I'm just saying. He, I don't think he's worth taking. This is a fantasy episode. We're not talking about the NFL. We're talking about in general about his. We're talking about his fantasy value, and I wouldn't take him because of his ADP. And I don't think he's going. If he has MVP, MVP season again, yes, he's worth taking in the first round because he's going to be better than a lot of other guys. But I don't think he's going to. Which is why I'm saying he's not worth taking that early. Take quarterback in the first round anyway, but yeah, I, I mean, wait yeah, I don't. That's my point. Is you wait late, and so it's not worth getting that Ryan. That's what I'm saying, but still. But he's, he's still one of the top one. Yeah, he's still going to be. I still have him as my fourth quarterback this season. So, I still think he. All of his weapons are still around him. He has another year with them. You're and forgetting all the, how much an offensive coordinator matters. That is so big to a quarterback's development. Kyle Shanahan is one of the best developing quarterbacks. Losing him and putting in a guy that's never been successful and where he goes, Steve Sarkeesian. Is not going to work out, in my opinion. I just don't think it will. It doesn't fit. Muhammad Sanu and Julio Jones are there, and yeah, you've got Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman, but Sarkeesian likes to run the ball, so they're going to run the ball, ball a lot. You saw Alabama. They wasn't like their quarterback was throwing 50, 60 passes a game, which you see in college all the time. You saw Bo Scarborough, if that's his name. Bo right. Yeah, you saw him get 20, 30 carries. Like, it's all about the running game. I mean, I think that opens up the passing game a lot for the – Falcons, then, if they do run the ball well, I I don't love Sarkeesian, but I don't think he's going to uh, make Matt Ryan do terrible this year either. I didn't either. say that. I think he's going to decline and not worth his value. All right, let's move on to our next question. Are the rookie quarterbacks worth drafting at all? Jason, what do you think? Not in standard leagues or PPR leagues, but in a dynasty league. You look at Patrick Mahomes, I think he's the guy you look at. Uh, he's a low-value and that means he's low risk. He can sit your bench for two to three years, just like in real life, and then he'll be ready to go. So assuming you've got a quarterback already, hopefully you've got a guy like Jameis or Derek Carr, or maybe an established guy like Brady, you want to get Mahomes on your bench, let him sit for a few years, and then once he's the starter, make him your starter too, and hopefully Brady is not as valuable then. Another guy, if you really don't have a quarterback and you need him now, and you want him long-term in a dynasty league, Deshaun Watson, the Texans traded away their first rounder for him, so they're clearly all in on him, and you might as well too. Um, yeah, I'm not that impressed with the quarterback class this year. Uh, There's lots of can, good draft and stash guys. Yeah, so yeah. I think you can take them in a keeper league or something. But uh, next year's class though was a lot better. So. Mm-hmm. I'd take Deshaun Kaiser any day. I'm kidding. No, don't do that. Don't <laughs> take any of the quarterbacks. Only if you're in a keeper league, honestly. Deshaun Watson has the best upside out of them all, in my opinion. I wouldn't take but, it. I mean, in a dynasty league, you want Patrick Mahomes because he's such a low risk. Like, you don't have to get him. Like, I think Watson, in a dynasty league, he's, he's going to go him. first or second round. But you can get Mahomes in the fifth, sixth, seventh round. Hopefully, he's having some bench. He's not going to play. I mean, it's not like there's, he's got low there's not that many Mahomes bench spots. You... But, I mean, he can be your backup QB. That's what I'm saying. He can just sit as you're on a dynasty league. You don't need 
a quarterback as a backup is going to be that good. I mean, you've got somebody in Mahomes who you can get with one of your last picks because he's such a low value because he's not going to play. So now you've got low value, which equals low risk. If he doesn't work out, okay, move on to the next guy. Or take one of the better QBs in the rookie class, in my opinion. I'm just saying I wouldn't because those guys are going to go so early. That's what I'm saying. He's going to go so early yeah, in I the see. dynasty drafts. Like, they'll go first round. Watson and probably Kaiser will go first round in most dynasty drafts because he has potential to play so early. The only one I'm touching is Deshaun Watson. I don't like Mahomes. I mean, I think he'll be solid, but not like anything special, like a top 10 fantasy quarterback at any point in his career. So the only one I'm touching is Deshaun Watson. But let's move on to our top five quarterbacks who you want to stay away from in uh, this year's fantasy. Jason, what do you think? I want Andrew Luck. On ESPN, he's QB number four in an average draft position of 63. At 63, there is lots of value there, and I'm not touching Andrew Luck, and it's too much of a reach where I think there are much better guys below. I'm staying away from Andrew Luck. Yeah, I went with uh, Alex Smith. I mean, people really aren't going to take him anyway, but uh, he can play well at times, but just doesn't put up the numbers you need in fantasy football. Mine is Marcus Mariota. I don't what? think he's going to have that great of a season. He's a at QB fifteen on ESPN. Sixteen. Six. Even better. Like so people take reaches on everybody. They think, oh, he's a dual threat. He can run and get me points too. That's the thing. People think wrong. And he has fantasy. a big name. Yeah. People will take reaches on him. And you should not. What's his ADP? I don't know. I think it's like 150. At 140, 150, Mary, I mean, he won't be there because quarterbacks are more valuable. But at QB 15 or 16, that is great value for Mariota, in my opinion. There's so many other quarterbacks out there that will have better seasons. You don't want to take a reach on Marcus Mariota and think, oh, yeah, he's going to have a great season for me. And he also gets hurt. That's I reason. think he's – see, he's one of my steals. I think he's going to have a good year with Eric Decker. You've got a solid running game that can help lighten the load and a phenomenal offensive line with Taylor Gorn and Jack Conklin. Yeah. I, I mean – I just don't know. And they're going to have a tougher schedule. I can see the season. injury concern. It, the schedule's easy. I thought Dylan said in the AFC South. AFC South, the whole schedule is easy. Yeah. Okay. Well, he could have. Yeah. I think DeMarco Murray is going to have a good year, in my opinion. I do, they're too. They're going to use him a lot, and Marriott will not – he won't have that many options. I can see like have that many chances to throw it. So I, in my opinion, he's a reach. Um, for mine, I'm gonna agree with Jason and say Andrew Luck. Although I think Andrew Luck will have a good season. He'll throw the ball a lot. The only thing for me is the health. Will he be ready week one? How long? I think the Colts are committing to letting uh, this injury heal. So not sure how long he'll be out. And that's really my only reason for. Staying away from Andrew Luck, at least at QB4. We already got into it, but mine is Matt Ryan at QB5, an average draft position at 64. I'm not touching the quarterback at 64th pick in the draft. He's going to decline with a new offensive coordinator, and I'm just not too sure that that's going to be. He's not worth it at 64, and he's not worth it any earlier. I'm taking guys later and staying away from Matt Ryan. Uh, mine is Carson Palmer. He has a big name, so uh, he's just too old. Had a down year last year, and he's regressing. My number four is Blake Bortles. Uh, I know a lot of people are high on him. Jason, you're high on the Jags this year. I am. I fell for the Blake Bortles Me too. thing last year. It was oh. a disappointment. Do not draft him. He throws way too many interceptions. I think he'll be he's better. He's on a bad team. I think. Don't say that. <laughs> I think yes, he'll he be. Is. I think he'll be better as a player than a fantasy player. I don't think he's a good fantasy option. But I think he's a solid quarterback. I think he'll show he's a solid quarterback next year. I think the opposite. What? He's a cut Yeah, he needs to chill on the interceptions. I think the opposite. I think he'll actually be decent in fantasy this year because the Jags will throw the ball a lot. They'll no, be they coming won't. from behind. Why would they throw the ball a lot? They've Leonard Fournette. Because they'll be coming from behind. They're not a good team. That's what You're they did so last dumb. year. so You think the Colts are going to be good and the Jags are going to be bad. That just is so yeah. stupid. That just not <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> you told me the Colts defense is good. Look at the Jags defense. Like That's just so dumb. Calais Campbell would destroy any one of your defensive linemen. A.J. Boye and Jalen Ramsey are better than any one of your... Yeah. Devontae Davis? Calais Campbell versus Jonathan Hankins. That's a joke. I love this quarterback episode. <laughs> <laughs> the defense of the Jags would destroy the Colts. And, Jam- and oh Andrew God. Luck is not... Jason. Jags are better than... Yes! That's just... I'm not high on either team, but I but like the Jags. The Colts are not good. All right. Anyway, I'm going to agree with Dan in saying Carson Palmer 
the age. Uh, they want to give David Johnson a ton of carries, and Larry Fitzgerald, his best weapon, is getting older. If I am drafting in a fantasy draft, I am staying away from Carson Palmer. Who's your third, Jason? Mine's Tyrod Taylor. I know at QB 16 it's not a reach, but I promise you guys, do not draft him. Buffalo averages one of the lowest amounts of passes per game, and they have no weapons besides Sammy Watkins, and who knows when he's going to play. I like Zay Jones, but besides that, he is terrible. At QB 15, it's not worth it. Uh, I have Eli Manning here. Uh, he has more weapons this year, but I think he just makes too many mistakes and has too many bad performances. My number Wait, three. time out, time out, time out. Is Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, and OBJ now? I like I just said. I think he makes just too just many, too many picks. It's not worth yeah. it. Okay, that's for debate. But my number three is Tyrod Taylor. Same exact reason as Jason. They don't throw a whole lot, and he's kind of overrated, in my opinion. Yeah, that makes three of us. Tyrod Taylor. They have Shady McCoy, Sammy Watkins, who probably won't make it the whole season, and nothing. The Bills are not going to have a good season. Tyrod Taylor's going to have a down year. Yeah, my number two is Russell Wilson. At 87 and QB6, that's really the QB6 part that I'm uh, not a fan of. At QB6, I think that you've got Eddie Lacy there, Thomas Rawls, and CJ Procise to help balance out the running game. I'm just not sure if Seattle's offense is going to be that explosive. They're going to have to rely on the defense of Richard Sherman. And I think Seattle actually starts to decline a little bit. I don't like Russell Wilson that much this year. I think he rebounds from last year's terrible season, but I think it's just not worth it at QB6. I think there are lots of guys that you can get later, which I've made pretty clear, I feel like. Uh, I have Kirk Cousins in number two. Uh, he finished the season terribly, throwing only five touchdowns and five interceptions in the last five games. And he also lost Pierre Garçon and Deshaun Jackson. Mine is also Kirk Cousins. He has no weapons around him. Throw prior is most likely his best receiver. Josh Doxson is overrated, in my opinion, as well. He was a first-round pick a few years ago out of TCU. But Jordan Reed could be solid for them from the tight end spot. But Kirk Cousins doesn't have anyone to throw to, so that's why he's my number two. Uh, for mine, I'm going to agree with Jason again and say Russell Wilson. The Seahawks have a terrible offensive line, and like you said, the Seahawks are going to start to decline. Already had 21 interceptions, and, or 21 touchdowns, 11 interceptions last year. That is not a good touchdown-interception ratio, and I think... He'll have a similar season this year, another down year for Russell Wilson. My number one QB to stay away from is Dak Prescott. QB 8 on ESPN and ADP of 101. I'm not touching Dak Prescott before Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, or Matthew Stafford. Dak Prescott, I love. I think he's a great quarterback in the NFL, but not fantasy-wise. You've got Ezekiel Elliott. I do think Dak and Dez start to figure out their connection more, but I still don't touch Dak Prescott. I have Andrew Luck at number one. Uh, honestly, I doubt he'll play all 16 games. His line is terrible. And also, if you want to start him in the playoffs, they play Denver, Baltimore, and Houston to end the year. My number one is also Dak Prescott. Last year was not really a fluke for me, but I don't think he's going to have any season like that again here soon. He's going to throw more interceptions. He might throw some more touchdowns, but... His health might be an issue for me. He got hit a lot last year, but the offensive line is solid. Mine is going to be Drew Brees. He's 38 years old this year and lost Brandon Cooks. I do not like him at quarterback two or three this season. Um, I would much rather have uh, Rodgers or Brady or even one of the second-tier quarterbacks later, like Luck, uh, Ryan, uh, Russell Wilson, Big Ben. Those sort of guys I would put in the same kind of class as Breeze, and I don't. I think he's way overrated at the two or three quarterback. Yeah, so let's go into our top five QB steals. My number five, we kind of talked about it, Marcus Mariota. I like him at QB 16. His offense is going to be explosive, and if he's healthy, watch out. Uh, my five, I have Tyrod Taylor. Uh, I mean, honestly, he's not a top ten quarterback by any means, but... He played most of last season without Sammy Watkins and still finished 10th among quarterbacks in total fantasy points. My number five is Carson Wentz. I believe he will have a good year. Alshon Jeffrey comes over to the Eagles, still has Jordan Matthews, and Nelson Aguilar is also good. Um, he's a young quarterback, but 
they've established many things on the offensive side from this offseason, so he will be solid. Um, for my, I'm going to go with Matt Ryan. Nothing has changed from last year besides the offensive coordinator. Still has the same weapons around him, and I like Matt Ryan uh, again to have a similar season to last year. As a steal? I mean, if it depends at, where you have him in your average draft position. At ESPN, he's at 64, and he's at QB5. I still like him as a, a third or fourth best quarterback this year. I mean, that's fine, but I don't like that. I don't like, like that's not a steal. Like, I feel like you're just. I mean, in yeah. terms of, like, people are thinking he's going to regress because he had an MVP season last year. And that's what Cam Newton did after his MVP season in 2015. I don't think he regresses that much. All right, my number four is James Winston, QB 12 on ESPN. I think he finishes in the top 10. Evans, Howard, Jackson, that's enough said. Mike Evans, OJ Howard, Deshaun Jackson, so much offensive firepower. Uh, I have um, Andy Dalton at number four. What the heck? Okay, no. Not as a starter, but as a backup. Solid backup, all right? He has more weapons this year in Joe Mixon and John Ross, along with a healthy A.J. Green and Tyler Eifert. I have the same exact thing. I don't know why we do, but I have the same thing as him. I have Andy Dalton at number four. I like the weapons, A.J. Green. And Andy Dalton (laughs) keeps improving each and every season. Red Rifle, baby. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of Andy Dalton this year. I think he'll be a decent backup, but not a steal. I think he'll be right around his draft position. But uh, my number four is going to be Jameis. I think the Bucks make the playoffs this year, and Jameis has a solid year. Will be in the top ten at QBs um, for fantasy by the end of the year. The Bucks grabbed Deshaun Jackson, OJ Howard in the off season. Jameis has a lot more weapons around him. Bucks are going to have a solid year. My number three is Kirk Cousins. He had a con- he's on a contract year. I think we're used to it every year now. He's on a contract year. At QB9, I think he finishes uh, top eight, top nine, so right around there. But I just mean with Pryor in town and Jordan Reed, and you've got uh, Fat Rob in the backfield. I like the Redskins this year, especially with their offense. I'm a fan of Kirk Cousins. But lost to Sean Watt- I mean, Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon. Yeah, but I mean, you got Terrell Pryor, and you've got Josh Doxson, who was hurt all year, and you were a big fan of Josh Doxson last year, so. Uh, I think he's a little. Also finished the year not very well last year, so I don't know. I mean, you know what you're getting in Kirk Cousins. You get 250 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick, right? And an overrated quarterback. No. <laughs> all right. All right, Dan, what do you got? Yeah, oh, Dan. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have Carson Wentz at three. Uh, he was splitting snaps last year in training camp, so I think his development will take a leap this year. My number three is Cam Newton. I think he'll have a bounce back season. Has weapons all around in Kelvin Benjamin, Devin Funches, and now they have Christian McCaffrey. Look for him to have a good year. Um, I'm gonna agree with Jason. He said Kirk Cousins. It is a contract year for him, and he's gonna looks like he's going to have a bidding war for free agency between the Browns and the 49ers. See who wants him more. And so he's going to want to put up the best stats this year uh, possible. He might be checked out a little bit and just want to play for his own stats as he tries to get the money. My number two, Big Ben Roethlisberger. QB 11, Antonio Brown, Martavis Bryant, Sammy Coates, and Le'Veon Bell. What a steal at QB11. I have him finishing inside my top 10, too. Uh, I have Jameis Winston at 2. Uh, Winston, I think he will take a big step forward, just like Mariota this year. Uh, also has new weapons into Sean Jackson and OJ Howard. Mine is Eli Manning. I think he will have a good year. So many weapons around him. And just more time to develop for the guys. Brandon Marshall, Odell Beckham, and Sterling Shepard. That is a solid group of receivers. He needs to cut down on the interceptions, though. That's my only knock on him. For my number two, I'm going to go with Derek Carr. Um, At QB15, he is good value. That's where, at least I saw, I took my uh, QB rankings from. I have him higher in mine, but um, from what I've seen, uh, I think Carr will have a very good year. Uh, 28 touchdowns, 6 interceptions last year. Uh, the same team bringing him back, plus plus Beast Mode coming out of retirement. I like Derek Carr. Number one, Derek Carr. He's at QB10 right now with Michael Crabtree, Amari Cooper, Jared Cook. He'll be finishing as a top five fantasy quarterback this year. 
He has got so many options, as well as Marshawn Lynch and Jalen Richard in the backfield. Derek Carr leads the number two scoring offense and best offense in the NFL this year to the AFC Championship and finishes a top five quarterback in the NFL and as a fantasy quarterback. Uh, I have Marcus Mariota at two or at one. Uh, keeps improving every year, and uh, I think he's set to become a tier two quarterback this year and has a new weapon in Corey Davis. I have Big Ben at number one. He's number 11 on ESPN. Great group of receivers, Antonio Brown. Remember, they have Martavis Bryant coming back. They drafted Juju Smith-Schuster. He's going to have a good year. Big Ben, he was considered retirement last year. He's got something to prove. Yeah, I'm going to also go with Big Ben at number one. Um, I like the Steelers this year. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, always going to be solid. He gets back March Havis Bryant, and he comes back to form. The Steelers will be a very good team to watch out for this year. All right, so let's rank them. The top 10 QBs. Dan, who you got number 10? Uh, I have James Winston at number 10. Uh, like I said before, new weapons in Deshaun Jackson, OJ Howard. I think he'll take a big step forward this year. I have Jameis Winston as well, same reason. I've got Jameis. That makes four of us. Jameis Winston at number 10. All right, Dan, number 9. I have Cam Newton at number 9. Uh, he will have a much better year than last year. No MVP type season, but with no injuries, he will be fine. I have Derek Carr at number 9. The only reason he can't, he's coming off an <laughs> injury from last That's year. Such a joke. He could regress just a little bit from the injury. I don't know. He just got paid. I'm good. That's a joke. We'll see. I like Derek Carr as a player and everything. I'm I want him to have a good season. I don't know. I got Kirk Cousins at number nine. Uh, I like him on a contract here. Terrell Pryor, Jordan Reed, lots of offense. I also have Derek Carr at number nine. <laughs> Didn't even throw for 4,000 yards last year, uh, but he did have a great touchdown interception ratio, 28 to 6. That's why I don't. That is, under 4,000 yards is why I don't have him in my. Uh, top five or kind he of around there. He was like 60 there, yards but... away and missed a game and a half. He definitely went thrown for over 60 yards if he had a full season. Well, who says he's going to have a full season this year? 98% of people you talk to? I mean, I'm uh, just saying. Uh, that's, what, that's why I have him at number nine. He got hurt You're last year. You're worried about injury. He could regret... yeah. How? You get yeah. Andrew Luck. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. All right, Dan, number eight. <laughs> um, at number eight, I have Marcus Mariota. Uh, his development, I think, is almost over. And I think he'll show his star power this year. My number eight is Eli Manning. I like the guys around him with the addition of Brandon Marshall. I like that. And number eight, I have Big Ben. I think he plays well. I think I can put him up to number seven above my next guy. But I liked him at eight just because I think Le'Veon might struggle early because he is not happy with his contract situation. I also have Mariota at eight. I agree with Dan. They brought in Corey Davis. Um, plus a very bad defense for the Titans. They're going to need to score some points to keep up, so Mariota will be able to sling the ball this year. All right, I have Andrew Luck at number seven. Uh, I think if he stays healthy, he could be a top-five quarterback, but I don't think he'll play all 16 this year. My number seven is Cam Newton. He'll have a bounce-back season. Nothing like his MVP year, but still pretty solid. Yeah, I've got Andrew Luck at number seven also. I think he struggles, throws too many picks, and the Lions still can't protect him. I don't like Dante Moncrief that much. Contract I, year. I think the Colts offense struggles and fails to make the playoffs, and Luck is ju and falls in at number seven because he will be throwing the ball so much because Gore struggles. That's a reason to put him higher, but I have That's Big Ben. Seven. Because I think he's even worse. Okay. Yeah, I think he's even worse, but because he's going to throw it more, I'm putting him at seven. Oh, I thought you said that. You're putting him at seven because no, he has I, to throw I, I, ball I, I put him at like nine or ten, but because he's to throw so much, putting him at seven. All right, I'm gonna go with Big Ben at my number seven. Uh, the big three with him: Le'Veon, Antonio Bryant, or Antonio Brown, not Antonio Bryant. Um, I think the Steelers will have another solid year. Uh, big Ben will uh, be great throwing to those two guys. All right, I also have Big Ben at number six, actually, but uh, he. Also has like like Dylan just said he has great weapons. So big man. My number six is Andrew Luck. Everyone said everything about him. If he stays healthy, he'll have a bounce back season. My number six is Russell Wilson. I still think he puts up enough numbers because they're gonna have to find some offense somewhere because they'll be so good defensively. And I know I said he was a reach, but I just I think he'll still be solid. I just wouldn't take him that early. Who's the receivers? They've got Jimmy Graham at the tight end. And then Doug Baldwin. Doug Baldwin. And Tyler is Chris Matthews still there? No, no, I think he's gone. Yeah, Tyler Lockett and Doug Baldwin. 
Um, I'm going to go with Russell Wilson also. Uh, he's been a consistent producer, but a bad offensive line is why I don't have him as a top five quarterback. Uh, I have Derek Carr at number five. Uh, here we go. I'm with Jason here. Oh. I think he will play like what he is worth this year. My number five is Big Ben. We've talked about him enough. I like the weapons. Uh, at number five, I have Matt Ryan. I think just with the offensive coordinator, I have some concerns. I have Andrew Luck at my number five. He'll finally be healthy this year. Best offensive line he's had since joining the Colts. And don't take Moncrief on a contract year. T.Y. Hilton will have another solid year. And I like Andrew Luck. Uh, I have Matt Ryan at number four. Um, MVP season last year. I don't think it'll be as good as that, but he'll still be solid. My number four is Drew Brees. My only reason, I don't really like the weapons around him. Got rid of Brandon Cooks, but we'll see. Yeah, I like Michael Thomas and Ted Ginn there. I mean, I, I think it's obviously worse than Brandon Cooks. My number four is Derek Carr. Like I said earlier, he's a top five quarterback. I put him in at number four. I think he balls out this year and leaves the Raiders Nation Championship. But I think Marshawn, I think everyone's expecting Marshawn to take a lot of like the carries away. I don't think he's really going to carry the ball that much, 10, 15 times max. And I think Carr can be able to sling it around this year. I have Matt Ryan at my number four. Uh, same squad. We talked about him a lot. MVP last year. Uh, I like Matt Ryan to have another solid year this year. Uh, I have Tom B. Ratty at number three. B. Ratty. B. Ratty. Uh, the GOAT. Basically not much else to say. I think he'll have a good year. I have Matt Ryan at number three. He's going to have an MVP-like season but not win the MVP. My number three is Drew Brees. I think he'll throw up for 5,000 yards again, do what he does. Yeah, Breeze looks like he's going to be a consistent producer until he retires. However, not as good as last season without Cooks. Uh, I have Drew Breeze number two. Over 5,200 yards and 37 touchdowns last year. Seems like he just never declines, honestly. My number two is the GOAT. Until he starts declining, I have Brady up in my top three. Right there with you, he's number two. Same. All right, our number ones, I'm pretty sure they're consistent of Aaron Rodgers. Hey, Aaron Rodgers, that's it. Yeah, great season. I've got season. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, I've got Aaron Rodgers, too. <laughs> yeah, he'll have, he'll have another solid season. Bringing in Martellus Bennett, Jordy Nelson, yeah. Randall Cobb, Devonta Adams, running back of Ty Montgomery. Whew, if everyone stays off. healthy, the Packers offense is going to be another good one this year. And they get to play the Bears twice. All right, so... We're taking the Sunday <laughs> off, and then Monday we are back at it with some uh, college football. We're doing the Pac-12, and then we're also doing some call our uh, fantasy football. Sorry, some fantasy football running backs this next week coming up. So stay tuned. Yeah, a lot of good stuff coming out. If you want to see it all, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this fantasy football episode and want to see it more like it, hit the like button. And if you want to follow us on Twitter to see every time we post a new video or a new article on our website, the link is in the description. Follow us there. And thank you guys for listening. We will see you Monday.